another topic that we look at is diet and nutrition. So, a balanced diet then, what is it? Well, the definition is, this involves taking in the right amount of food or level of energy that the body needs in its expenditure of energy. So, what you're putting in needs to match the work that you're putting out, okay? If you're putting too much in, not doing enough exercise, it's imbalanced. If you're not putting enough in, but doing loads of exercise, it's imbalanced. It needs to be exactly like that, okay? So, how do, what, what makes up a balanced diet? We'll start with carbohydrates over this side here of your key booklet. What are they? Simple carbohydrates, they're quick release energy. Now, they don't seem to split these. In the resource guide they gave us, they did. But in spec, it doesn't split them. But anyway, simple carbs, uh, carbohydrates, don't say carbs, you lose a march for that. Quick release energy such as jam, sugar, fruit juices, sweets. Complex carbs, carbohydrates, they're slow release energy. Okay? Bread, pasta, cereals, potatoes. But generally, they will just ask you what are carbohydrates, and you can give a mix of them. Key facts then, carbohydrates are very important to an athlete in high-intensity activity. Uh, they're stored as glycogen in the muscles and provide energy, and they should make up 50 to 60% of an athlete's diet. Quite a lot. They're the fuel. They're the things that you burn to keep going. Next bit, proteins. What are they? Well, the sources of proteins are things like your meat, fish, poultry, so that's chicken, okay? Uh, and the three primary complete proteins, they're the, they're the big ones. Key facts, uh, they produce hemoglobin, enzymes and hormones, can be a source of energy, but are not used in fats and carbohydrates, so you rarely burn, burn protein, you're in a bad place if you're burning that. Um, consuming protein though, it increases muscle mass, it increases the myoglobin in the muscles, builds muscles, and it should account for about 15-20% to 20 of an athlete's diet, your proteins. Next bit, fat. Don't just think about proteins as well as protein shakes. It's not. We're talking about food sources here, okay? Not other things like protein shakes. Fats. What are they? Well, you've got saturated fats such as meat products, dairy products, cakes and confectionery. And then we've got unsaturated fats like oily fish, nuts, uh, margarine, olive oils. And you've got loads of different types, okay? Key things about fats then. When muscles have oxygen, fats are the main energy source. Um, fats consumption could be monitored as it could cause obesity, so you've got to be careful you don't take too much fat in, even though it is an energy source. Um, it's a major source for uh, activities that are using low intensity, so a long distance run. That's carbohydrates, high intensity, like your sport, your games activities, or your 100 meter sprints. These ones are more for people over a long period of time, so like more Farah would take on a lot of fats. It would take the carbohydrates, but it would have fats in there as well. Um, and also, fats can insulate your body. They should make up to about 30 to 35% of an athlete's diet. Okay? According to OCR. The next part then are vitamins, fibre, minerals, and water. These are the smaller parts of the diet. Still parts of it though. Vitamins then, what are they? Well, they're found in fresh fruits and vegetables. Vitamin A, D, and E are found in fats, uh, and K as well. Vitamin B and C are in water. And vitamin D can be made by the body comes from the sunlight as well, okay? Um, key facts then, vitamins, are non, they've no calories in them, all right? And they're needed in small quantities. Uh, they produce, they help in the production of energy, shall we say, uh, and they help us prevent, uh, function our metabolism and present, prevent diseases. That is a key one for vitamins, prevent diseases. Um, vitamin D is also created by sunlight, like you said that, allowing calcium to be absorbed. Uh, and vitamins don't directly enhance performance. You can't just take a vitamin tablet and improve your performance, okay? But if you're obviously being, well, vitamins prevent diseases, you're gonna be able to train more and things like that. So you could argue that they have a, a knock-on effect, definitely. Next one's fiber, found in fruit, vegetables, cereals, beans, lentils, and wholemeal bread. And basically, fiber helps the digestive system to work effectively, all in here, okay? It allows the large intestine to get rid of waste from the body, and high fibre diets reduce cholesterol and can limit obesity and diabetes. Minerals will go to, don't confuse these with water. Minerals, so you've got loads of different types that are needed in large amounts such as calcium, potassium, sodium. Uh, you get these from meat, fish, dairy products, and ve uh, vegetables contain iron as well. Um, milk, dairy products, nuts and green vegetables contain calcium in them. There's loads of different things there. Key facts, minerals, again, non-caloric, caloric, um, 
iron is an essential component for hemoglobin in your red blood cells to help it carry oxygen around your body. Uh, iron deficiency can cause anemia, so you've not got enough minerals in there, that could be a risk. Calcium is health is important for healthy bones uh, and teeth in there as well. Without that, we're going to have a bit of a problem there, brittle bones. And without the enough calcium, brittle bones is osteoporosis. Okay? Final, water and hydration. There's a question on this in the exams, actually. What are they? Well, it's water, isn't it? Uh, key facts, carries nutrients and helps remove waste products. Um, it helps regulate body temperature. We've got daily consumption of water should be about two litres roughly on average. A lack of water can create dehydration. Uh, and dehydration can result in not being able to exercise, cardiovascular system problems, and also lead to heat exhaustion and maybe even heat stroke, things like that, which we saw recently with rugby league players uh, having a bit of an issue with that. So, this last page, now in your key book, that's right, there's a lot on there. And again, we've done this because of the order of book that was given to us. Um, you've got the Healthy Eating Initiative, you want to have a read of that. That's just how to get people eating a lot more healthy, a lot more of a balanced diet. I've not seen anything on that in the mock, so. Um, what, I, what we need to look at though is strategies for athletes. I think that's in there with the diets, it's a key one. So, to increase energy then, carb loading. Uh, carb, glycogen is cru crucial for optimum energy. Basically, sports people deplete the stores of energy in the body um, and then absolutely cut down for carbohydrates for about three days. But then what they do is before they exercise, two days before, they really build up the carbohydrates that they take. The body soaks them in. Okay, um, You see that before the London Marathon. They have these things called pasta parties on the Friday and the Thursday just to build all that energy in that body. All right? So carb loading is one. Next one, to prevent dehydration. Athletes will, um, thirst is not a good indicator for it. An athlete should drink continuously, even if they don't feel thirsty during a game, grab some water, continuously keep drinking, okay? Small amounts of water is better than taking loads. Sports energy drinks might help as well uh, for high intensity and longer exercises. Finally, sports and athletes should maintain vitamins and minerals. They should be, you know, it requires more and more of their athlete, and we said before, if you're taking vitamins on board, it prevents diseases and illness, um, and it, they can definitely help you train more often. Key one for me though is about strategies for athletes, your carbohydrate loading. Taking on those carbohydrates, reducing them, then building up so your body really soaks them in and uses that energy to perform.